my name is Lauren and I am one of the co-presidents of Rowan's Three Printing Club and I'm also the president of Women in Engineering and today I'm going to be teaching you how to do the model for the 3D PC and we joint event um, which is our 3D DNA pencil holder. Super cool. So let's get started. The first step is to go to www.onshape.com and when you get to onshape.com, you should see something like this. So if this is your first time working with Onshape, go ahead and sign up. You can use your Rowan credentials or a .edu credential and you should have no problem doing this. Um, the best part about Onshape is that it's completely free and you don't have to worry about downloading something to your computer uh, because it's a website. So very convenient. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in um, and then we can get started with our design. All right, so once you log on to Onshape, you should see something that looks like this. Um, there would be a lot of the previous models that you've designed on this homepage here. Um, and then if you don't have any, if this is your first time using Onshape, hopefully after you learn how it works, you'll be able to do plenty of your own models and you'll have a ton of things in here just like me. So this is the pencil holder that we are going to be designing. I will just open it up and show you what it looks like. Yep, so uh, very, very easy design, um, does not take a lot of time, good for beginners, and it comes out looking really cool like this. And if we tilt it up to the top viewpoint here, you can see that there's two sections for your pencils or your pens or your markers to go, so it can keep them a little bit organized, which is also really cool. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to open a new document. So if you're at the homepage of Onshape, you can do this by going to this create button, hitting the down arrow and just clicking the document button. And it's gonna ask you to name it. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name my 3D PC and we DNA pencil holder. And this is what you should see when you open a new document. So if you see this right now, you are on the right track. Okay, so now we can actually get into designing our model. And to do that, the first step is to create a new sketch. And we are going to do that by clicking the sketch button in the top left corner here. And it's going to ask us to select a sketch plane. I'm just gonna do front. Um, you can do whichever one you would like, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're in the front plane and notice that the tools at the top bar here change. Um, this is because you have different tools um, depending on whether or not you are in the sketch mode. So these are the sketch mode tools. This is what we're going to start with. So we're going to start by coming over here to the left side of our tool screen and hitting this corner rectangle thing. And we're going to drag our cursor over to this dot that's in the middle of our front plane and just kind of drag up. It doesn't matter how far you go. Um, and when you get to a point that's kind of far, far away from that center point, you can just drag and create a box. Perfect. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to dimension our box so that it's big enough uh, or not, it's the correct size, I should say, for our base of the pencil holder. So we're going to start doing that with our dimensions tool, which is the two lines in between um, the plane here. So click on that and then you should notice when you go over a certain part of your box, it will turn yellow. That's good, that's what we wanna see. So when it turns yellow, we're gonna click on it and drag out notice that this is 0.936 inches. So I wanna change it to 10 millimeters. And to do that, I'm just gonna type 10 and then MM and hit enter. And then notice that the size of the box changes. So that's exactly what we wanna have. And we're also going to do the same with the top, but except for doing it with 10 millimeters, we are going to do 32.5 millimeters and hit enter. Perfect. Once we have our box that is dimensioned in the right way, we are going to come over here to our line tool. We're going to click that and we're going to kind of make a, a triangle here in the corner, the right hand corner of our little box. So just something that looks like that, you're going to make a triangle and connect it to the two ends of our rectangle. And then what we're going to do is use that dimensions tool again to make sure that the point all the way to the left and the point all the way to the right have a distance between them of 37.5 millimeters. 
And once you do that, notice that the size of your triangle changes a little bit. Um, but overall, this is exactly what we want to have. So if you're at this point, um, that's awesome. If not, feel free to pause the video and rewind to get back to that part where you need to get some help and then rewind to come back once you're ready. I'm going to move on with the next step of creating our DNA pencil holder, which is to make this 3D. So we're going to revolve it. Okay, so we're going to hit our green check mark for our first sketch because we are done with that. And now we're going to come up here to the new tool set, which is not in the sketch um, aspect of Onshade. We're going to come over here to what looks like a donut, maybe. <laughs> um, it's called the revolve feature. So we're going to click on that and it's going to ask us to select the faces and sketch regions to revolve. So we're going to click both our rectangle and the little tiny triangle that we created. And then it's gonna ask us to revolve which axis we want to revolve around. And that's just going to be the line all the way to the left. So we're gonna click on that. And then notice that, boom, we have this nice circle platform looking thing, which is the base of our pencil holder. So awesome. We're done with the revolve. So we're gonna hit this green check mark. There we go. And then if you want to take your um, right clicker and just kind of drag around, you can notice that, yep, it's definitely 3D. So awesome. OK, so now what we're going to do is add our helices. And to do that, um, we don't want to do another sketch. We're just going to use the tools that we have here at the top. Um, and it does not appear to be here. So if you don't see anything that looks like a spiral, what you can do is hit Alt-C and then you can search for a helix. And yep, that's exactly what our tool looks like. Um, you can also, I believe it might, yeah, if you go hit the down arrow on the tools that are kind of toward the right, you can look for it and it should be in there. Um, but otherwise, if you don't have the time to do that or you don't want to look through all the tools, you can just click, um, or I'm sorry, you can type Alt-C and then type in helix and it should come up for you. All right, so here we go. The first thing that we're going to do when our helix one box pops up is we're going to change this thing that says turns to height and turns. So that's going to give us the ability um, for our helix to be reaching upward from our base here. So now once we have height and turns, we are going to click the area where we want the helix to spring up from. And that's going to be the top of our base. So we click that and notice that well, we have a helix, which is awesome. Now we just have to change the dimensions a little bit. So instead of one inch, we're going to do 150 mm for millimeters. Then we're going to change the revolutions to two. And that's it. We're going to keep that starting angle at zero. So we're done with the first helix. So click that green check mark. And yeah, so it's kind of starting to look a little bit like half of a DNA. <laughs> um, now we can add our second helix. So again, we're going to click that helix tool. Um, this is very similar to the first helix that we did, except there's little difference. Um, there we go. There is a little bit of a difference with the starting angle, so I will show you that. Yep, so make sure that you change it to height and turns, um, and then click the edge of our circle base here at the top, and then we're going to change the height again to be 150 millimeters. We're going to change the revolutions to be two. Um, and notice that our helix is now overlapping with the first helix, and we don't want that. So we are going to change the starting angle to be 180 degrees, which means that both of our helices are 50% um, apart, or I guess they're symmetric. Yeah, that's a better way to say it. They are symmetric. Okay, so click that green check mark because we are now done with our two helices. And let's take a look at our structure. Yeah, you can move it around with your right clicker um, and look at how it is in the 3D dimension there. And it's looking pretty good. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to extrude our helices. And this is a little bit of a tough process to do. There's no way to really extrude a helices. Um, but what we can do is we can draw a box and then sweep it around um, each helix. And that should be able to do the trick for us. So to do that, we are going to create a new sketch. We are going to use the front plane um, or whatever plane that you originally worked with. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to pinpoint this part here where our helix attaches to our base. And to do that, we are going to use this point tool, which you should see in the sketch toolbox at the top there. So go ahead and click on that. And then you should be able to pinpoint exactly where your helix touches the base of your circle. All right. And another one right here. 
and perfect. So when you have those two, oops, sorry about that. When you have those two points um, on your base, you are ready to start sketching the squares. Um, and the squares are what are going to be sweeped um, throughout each helix to make it look like it's extruded. So this is a little bit of a tedious process, um, but definitely not hard if you you know, follow along and all that. So um, feel free, again, to pause if you get stuck, you need some extra time to figure it out. Um, you can always rewind and come right back to this point. Okay, so we're gonna start with our line tool. So all the way at the left of our toolbar in the sketch mode. And we are just going to hit that point right there. Um, oops, I'm gonna recenter myself real quick. Yep, we're gonna hit that point and we're going to make a straight line. So you should see that the line is straight when you have yellow um, tick marks on the inside of it. So I'll show you that again when I do my second line. Yeah, so we're gonna have two lines on either side um, and they need to be straight. So notice that my line there has yellow ticks in it. That means that it is straight right off of that point. So go ahead and make those two lines on either side. And once you have them done, you're going to come up all the way to the right side of your toolbar and you're going to hit this dimension tool that we've used before. And we're going to make sure that each line is 3.5 millimeters. Oops. There we go. Okay, so notice that they both look very equal, which is exactly what we want. And now what we're going to do is take our rectangle tool that we used at the very beginning. Um, we're gonna come all the way to the left side of our first point there. And we're going to kind of take our cursor and go up in a straight line. So notice that again, we see those yellow ticks. That means that the line's straight, um, so perfect. Once you get to a distance away from that point, you're gonna click with your rectangle tool and kind of just drag and make your rectangle as big as the line. So stretch it as long as the two lines that you did before. And you should have half of our square that we're going to make. We're going to do the same thing with the bottom. So go ahead and click that point all the way at the bottom left of your initial two lines and just drag out your rectangle until it hits that second point all the way to the right of your middle line there. All right, so now you have a rectangle and we know that the outer lines at the top and the bottom, those are both seven millimeters total in length, but we need to make sure that these two lines on the sides are as well. So to do that, we are going to take our dimensions tool again. We're going to measure each of them to be 3.5 millimeters. And notice that the line moves. And that's exactly what we want to see. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So that is one done and one more to go on the other side. So I'm going to repeat the process. Um, feel free to skip ahead if you know what you're doing, um, but if you would like to follow along, go right ahead. Um, oh, it looks like we are out of sketch mode. So to come back into sketch mode, just double click on sketch two, which is what we were just working on. So again, we're gonna take our line tool. We are going to draw a straight line out on the right side of our points and then another straight line on the left side of our point. And we should have something that looks like this. We're going to take our dimensions tool and come in here and just change the length of each of these lines to 3.5 millimeters. There we go. All right, and then again, we're going to take our rectangle tool. We're gonna to come up to the left point here and just make our rectangle on top of our lines. And we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom. Perfect. All right. And then again, we know that the top and the bottom lines are 3.5 millimeters each. Now we just need to make sure that these lines on the sides are also 3.5 millimeters. Perfect. All right, so we have a completely centered square on either side. So that means this sketch is complete. So we're going to check our green check mark there and notice that we have both of our squares visible to us um, right at the edge where that point of our helix connects to the top of our circle base, which is great. Okay, so now we are going to do a sweep. So like I said before, this is kind of taking the square and extruding it along the length of the helix. 
So to do that, we're gonna come up here to this 2B looking thing um, all the way at the left side of our non-sketch toolbar. So we're going to click on that and we're going to click on the two halves of our square. And then it's going to ask us to choose a sweep path. And that's just going to be the helix. Perfect. And notice that our helix is formed all the way up until the end of the point there, which is exactly what we want. That's great. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing with the other helix. And to do that, we're just going to turn our plane and we're going to make sure that we are on the back plane. And it's the same process. So we are going to hit that to be looking sweep tool um, and we are going to make the sketch two visible by just clicking on the crossed out eye it should uncross the eye and you should be able to see it. And it's going to ask us again to select the regions that we want to sweep. And that's going to be the two halves that make up our square. Um, and then the sweep path, again, we're going to use this helix right here. Perfect, done. All right, and if you kind of zoom out there, take your right clicker and move it around, you should see something that looks very similar to a DNA, except for the bonds in between them. And that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so if you're at this point, you're doing a great job. I'm going to move on, but again, if you need any help for you're stuck on something, please pause and um, do what you need to do. And then you can catch up afterward. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, like I just said, we are going to create the connections or the bonds between our two strands of DNA here. And to do that, we are going to kind of view it from the top one here. So notice that there is a point in the middle, perfect middle actually, of our circle base. Um, we want to definitely make sure that this is here because we are going to be drawing a line straight up from this point um, once we go into our front plane. So that requires us to do another sketch. So hit that sketch button. Um, you're gonna select the front plane and come over again all the way to the left-hand side of our toolbar to our line tool and click that circle. It should light up yellow for you at the very center of our base plane and drag up, make sure that you have a straight line with the yellow ticks in the middle. And then once you get to a height that's kind of above the ending point of your helix, you can just click and notice that the line becomes black and it is um, there, exactly. <laughs> okay, perfect. So we have our line in the middle of our structure here. Um, and you can also move that around, just make sure that it's right in the middle and it looks like mine is. Um, if you're having issues with that, um, just continue to try and get that line straight in the middle and it should work eventually. Okay, so this is an interesting part. We are making squares here that are five millimeters on each side um, at each of these points where our two helices intersect. We're gonna start at the bottom. And the way that I like to do this is by creating a circle first. Um, so we're gonna create a circle that's kind of in the middle. You can just eyeball it, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, and we're gonna dimension each of these circles to be five millimeters in diameter. Oops, okay. And if it moves our circle up, we can just grab the circle by the center and just drag it down until we get it to the correct spot where we want it to stay. So you can keep doing that for each of the intersection points of the helices. Just do a very easy circle and then click the dimensions tool to come over and make it, oops, a five millimeter diameter circle. Perfect. All right, and one more. Awesome, okay, so we have our circles and like I said, we're trying to make squares. So we are going to use our very handy dandy square, I'm sorry, rectangle tool, um, but instead of the regular one that we've been using for the other parts of this helix model, we are going to use the center point rectangle. So it should be visible from the down arrow um, of the regular rectangle tool. So when you see it, just click that um, and notice that the tool changes. Uh, make sure that you're in that tool and you can do that by just making sure that it's blue. Okay, so we're gonna zoom into our first circle at the bottom. We're going to click that point. It should turn yellow when you put your cursor over it. So just click that and then notice that you can kind of drag out and create this square around your circle. Um, 
and we're going to do the same thing with the dimensions. We're going to make sure that the top and the sides are both five millimeters. Perfect, and just continue to do that all the way up. So again, come over here to make sure that you are in the center point rectangle tool. Click that center point of your circle and just drag out and you should have a square. And we wanna make sure that the square is five millimeters on both sides. So we're just going to dimension it. And one more. Okay, so that looks like all of our circles are now done. They have squares around them. Um, and now what we're going to do is just delete the circles from the inside of them. So we are just kind of using those circles as a tracing point and now we don't need them anymore. So to delete the circle, you're just going to put your cursor over it until it is yellow and just click on it and then hit the delete key on your keyboard and notice that your square is there, but not the circle. And just keep doing that. Awesome. Okay. And then the final thing that we're going to do is just delete the line that we had made in the center. Perfect. And then notice that if we zoom in, our squares are still there. They're kind of like floating in the center there, which is exactly what we want. And now we are ready to extrude them. So go ahead and center your design, um, whichever way you'd like, and you can kind of move it around to see the square in the middle there. Perfect. Okay, so we're done with the sketch three. So we're going to click our green check mark. And now what we're going to do is extrude. So very simple, just come over here to the extrude button. It should look like two boxes together. Um, click on that and then click on each square. Perfect, okay. And you can kind of take your right clicker and move it around and notice that, yep, we have all of the lines that are kind of going halfway through um, the center of the helices. And see this arrow pointing out? We are going to click and drag that um, and just make sure that our lines are intersecting um, perpendicular with our helix. So yep, as long as you see the line kind of going into the helix, that's good. We just need to make sure they're connected. Um, otherwise, when we go to 3D print, we will have a big mess and <laughs> we don't want that to happen. Okay, so we're done with extrude one. So click that green check mark. Awesome, and yeah, it looks a little funky because we're not quite done with extruding the entire uh, bonding point there. So we're gonna do a second extrude. Oops, oh, I'm sorry. We don't wanna delete anything. Oh no. <laughs> okay, yep, so second extrude, just come over here, click extrude, and then we are going to select the points of our squares that are not yet extruded. And notice again, we have that line um, I'm sorry, the arrow here, we're just going to drag that out until again, we see our extruded lines intersecting with our helix, which is, yep, yeah, exactly what we see. So hit that green check mark after you are satisfied with the connection point. And yep, yeah, look at that, you are completely done. You have successfully made a DNA helix pencil holder. And the cool thing is if we look at the top, um, I showed this to you at the beginning, um, yeah, let's center that. Notice that there's two spaces here for your pencil. So I'm totally someone who loves to be organized. So I could put my pens on one side and my pencils on the other, and I'd be a very happy camper. So um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial about how to make a DNA pencil holder in Onshape. Um, and be sure to check out 3D Printing Club's other videos to learn other things that you can do in Onshape. And we are looking forward to seeing you at this engineering and medicine and biology event on March 5th at 6 p.m. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.